Hello and welcome to Classic Replay on RFM. I'm Todd Robbins. Here on Classic Replay, we turn the spotlight back to fantastic memories and tremendous team performances from years gone by. Together, we'll celebrate the thrill of victory or remember the agony of defeat. Regardless of the results, we relive those special moments as a community, growing the tapestry that is our region's historic athletic tradition. We hope you enjoy the following presentation as Rivalry Family Media presents this classic replay. All right, Greg, continue. They'll be the first amateur wrestling team to win the wrestling mid-watch title. All right, Pat, this is an interesting story here. You're looking at uh, two rather large clubs, to say the least. Tell me exactly what are we looking at for matchups to see if... So typically, Gardner is the team that has always beaten In fact, most teams have beaten Leminster until very, very recently. So in terms of matchups, the teams are very, they're very equal. Unfortunately, you just saw a situation where one of the guys goes out, they don't show uh, a contestant, I mean, we get a forfeit, so uh, part of the sport. There's 13 weight classes, if you populate, you know, wonderful. Uh, it's a sport that quite locally has been in development mode for years, and one of the reasons for that is there's no feeder system for it. You, it, you go from knowing nothing about wrestling, no exposure to it, to suddenly you end up in high school and you see, oh, look at that, there's a wrestling program, I wonder what that is. The kids stumble in, and in four years they figure out how to wrestle. That doesn't build a program, and so you see, which is very some spotty representation, not able to populate all of the weight classes. Our program is fortunate because we do have a feeder system that's several years old now. Something I'd like to talk about a little further about later when I can focus on it. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the national anthem. Please stick with us. Gentlemen, I'm told we're experiencing some technical difficulties, so we are not officially live as of yet, but it's BDSN's broadcast. We will pick this up as we go, ladies and gentlemen, for now. Guys, from what I was just noticing there with the cross mat introductions, looking at the heavyweight matchup tonight, you have Sean Griffin, a freshman, and I didn't even catch what year his opponent was, but his opponent seemed to be twice the size of him. Tell me, what does that do with that kind of what looks like a mismatch? Is that actually a mismatch? It could be. But the difference between wrestling and other sports is you can have a freshman going against a senior and they don't think anything of it. You know, you look at as a wrestler, not as a freshman or a sophomore. So basically, what you're trying to get at is that it really doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, 300 pounds, 200 pounds, it's skill wins? There's been freshmen that have won state championships. Mm -hmm. and. Same as there have been seniors that have not done anything. So the, the heavyweight is uh, also referred to as unlimited. It's the only weight class that has 
the, that kind of fluctuation. So mm -hmm. you, you, you've kind of focused on the anomaly in all of the weight classes because these kids weigh in and you cannot exceed your weight limit in every, other, every one of the 12 classes in order to wrestle at that class. Unlimited, uh, ha, there isn't, you don't have that ceiling. So you find, uh, what you picked up is, weight-wise, clearly, there is a mismatch. Mm -hmm. What Greg's talking about is experience level, uh, regardless of freshman or senior, that experience is purely based on the individual. You can get that experience uh, to be superior to a senior based on your own personal commitment to, to the sport. So Greg, what are we looking at here in the 125 pound weight class? This is Josh Ridd versus Josh Richard of Lunister versus Sean Reed of Gardner. No so, so far it's two to nothing. Lunster. He hasn't broken 90 degrees, so there's no points yet. 55 seconds remaining in this first period. No back points yet. What's he, basically you're saying he's trying to go for a back point here? Yes. Referee in there very tight looking. He's going to look to get some back points before going for the pin. Alright, he's got his three back points. He's going to tighten up here. See what he can do. See if he can end this one early. Seems to be cinching that arm in underneath his throat. So what you're watching right now, the ultimate win in wrestling is to pin your opponent. Conversely, the ultimate defeat is to be pinned. This guy will not let it happen without a tremendous effort being put forth to fight it. He was able to do it that time, as well as second period. It's part of the subtle beauty in this sport. At the end of the first, ladies and gentlemen, five nothing. We said that is Greg Hoyt. Josh Richard. No, that's that's Josh, Josh Richard. Richard. I'm sorry. 125 pound weight class. And Josh is a freshman, and Josh came through Lemister's uh, youth program. He's one of the originals, right? One of the yeah, one of the pioneers <laughs> in the program. So he's got a lot of wrestling under his belt. In fact, in the youth program, we travel uh, regularly to Rhode Island. As a, there's a super program there. We would have, uh, Greg, Greg was in that program. That's right. We'd come back at the end of the season at our banquet. These guys would have 30 matches under their belt uh, in a season. That, that, that's a lot of wrestling. Mm. Locking in times, several years. The experience level brings this freshman on par with, I assume, an upperclassman. Yep. I don't know what, do you know what his year is? Josh? No, I know Josh is a freshman, the guy from Gardner. Gun read, no, uh, no year listed. That last point was for locking hands against Gardner. There's reversal. Two more points for Lemister. Josh working on him there. He's working that two on one. In this position, what's his ultimate goal? Trying to get him pulled over into a pin or just trying to score some points at this point? He's gonna try to put him on his back right now. The top wrestler is always striving for the pin. What's harder to pick up here is uh, some of the subtlety of actually what's happening. Yeah, the guy in the bottom obviously doesn't want to be there, so why is he there? Because the guy in the top is exerting tremendous force to keep him there. It's hard to see that force, but that tight waist that Josh has probably is enough to take the book away from most people. And so this guy in the bottom with a with a severe tight waist, you can you can experience oxygen dead out about 30 seconds of that. And you can see the look on his face right now. Yeah, Obviously Josh, struggling exactly. here. Josh isn't laying there. He's not just you know he's just not softly caressing this guy. 
That's the end of the second. On the board, it's signal eight nothing. Josh Richard leading the Gardner Wildcats, Sean Reed. So here we go, third and final period of the match, if I'm not mistaken. Josh chooses top. So far, it seemed like a back and forth matchup. I beg to differ with the eight point favor <laughs> with Lemonster. He seems to be in control. I mean, he may not be hitting him here, but he's certainly dominating this match. Mm -hmm. Out of bounds, they'll go back to the center. One thirteen remaining here in the third period. Reed is really gonna have to turn it on here if he wants to take this one. So at this point, you know, the Gardner coaches are going to be after their particular um, uh, wrestler to do something dramatic because obviously, so we might see a mistake here. The only chance he has to win at this point is to pin. So he's going to have to open up and really get aggressive and do something dramatic. There's that's a reversal. Just, that's just two points. That's not enough. So you're seeing it start to happen. The coaches are going to step up the pressure. So he's got to go for a quick pin here. What he's got to go he for could the pin. He's exactly, and he might because he's right now he's already lost. So something stupid isn't going to hurt. All right. All right. He he increases the opportunity of winning by just getting drastic. Josh is still down here. 30 seconds remaining in the third, 8-2, Josh Richard of Lemonster leading Sean Reed of Gardner. And you can see Josh is, he's tiring, he's slowing. Six minutes of wrestling is a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, I certainly know from experience. Yeah. Yeah. So it's minutes. not like uh, basketball, baseball, you know, the, the other sports. You got an opportunity to catch a win. Someone else will pick up the ball carry the load for a moment but in wrestling that's it. it it's just there's one person you walk on and off alone nice job by josh richard you feel the total joy of the win or the total humiliation of the loss there's no in between that one won there eight two josh richard makes it three nothing lemon shirt team total and we're going to get ready for our second match here to get underway guys uh you've been kind of equivalenting and comparing them to our other sports we cover the first period of a match basically the feeling out process where each guy tries to get to know the other yeah kind of test out the other guy's strength a little bit see what he has to offer the feeling out process might last oh. for two or three seconds not much more than that <laughs> it's all business Jake Richard with the headlock throw. Early no on. Secret here. You know he wants to pin you as much as you want to pin him. Mm -hmm. So you're going to feel each other up for a couple of seconds, and that's about it. And then they're down to the dirty work. This is 130 pound weight class. Jake Richard Lemonster and Chris Rue of Gardner. This is Josh's brother. This is Joe Bearweather's Expedience's broadcast of this wrestling meet coming to you here from the gym at Lemister High School. Todd Robbins, television's voice of the Blue Devils. Joined by Greg Nicodus and Pat Mason here from the gym at Lemister High School. And I'm now officially, we are live here from the gym at Lemister High School. Once again, it's BDSN special presentation of this wrestling meet. You're all in the shy blue doubles in the garden. Now let's get That's up there. And Pat Mason. Six here. points. There's the pin. All over in a blink of an eye. 
Unless, unless you're on the bottom, that was not the blink of an eye. That guy, for a minute and, uh, what is it, 20 seconds, was feeling the pain of having the life squeezed out of him and knowing there's not a dang thing he knew about it. <laughs> that is one long second for him. That pin came up with 48 seconds remaining in the first of that match. 9-0 Blue Devils team total. Second match, or check that match, about to get underway here. 130 pound weight class still, T.J. Williams. Neil, going to go for a second opinion there. I can't read the handwriting. Uh, we'll two points. Neil. Is this 30 That's or Champney. 35? Neil Champney. If you're going to listen on board, is 130, but I believe you're correct. I think it's 135. Yeah, T.J.'s wrestled 35 all year. It's one of the biggest 35s in the uh, that I've seen. TJ is also a youth program wrestler. Um, I'm, you know, without going face by face, Greg, you can uh, validate this. I think we got 80% of the varsity wrestlers are formerly youth program wrestlers. That's what it looks like. And that's an advantage, you know, having that experience before you get to high school. Now, Gardner also has a youth program. Uh, we've wrestled them in the the, their, their youth in the past, uh, so you know, in that sense, we're you know we're each running the same kind of programs in the city. Oh, locking hands, call the limits there. That'll be a point for Gardner. So locking hands is permissible when you're in a pinning combination. Otherwise, it's not. It's a penalty point. Now, is it within a certain period of time, or does that come up right away, as soon as the right. lock comes? Instantly. Instantaneously? Now, the referee will allow it if the, if the person who is attempting to move um, completes it, mm -hmm. he'll give him the two-point reversal. The, so he'll just allow a few seconds for the move to be completed. If the move fails, he'll break it at that point, award the one-point uh, penalty. Mm -hmm. 2-2 two, two here in the first round. 50 seconds remaining. I think they call that an escape on Gardner. I'm not mistaken. Oh. Williams with the takedown. So TJ's pretty comfortable with uh, the takedown. One of the things we do, and I think you remember this great, in the youth program, every choice, every opportunity in Rhode Island, we would give you guys neutral. I remember that. <laughs> Torture at some points, but... It's probably, actually, it's the most important part of the match. The statistics show that the person who wins the takedown normally wins the match. Yeah. It sets the tone right at the outset. 27 seconds remaining here in the first round, and T.J. Williams leads 4-2. Champion looking for that switch. Doesn't seem to be able to get it. Unfortunately, this poor guy from Gardner suffering from a blindfold from his own piece of head. Out of bounds once again. Actually, eyes are not an essential opponent to wrestling. <laughs> As, as we learned, blind, too, okay. in Youth Commission. <laughs> One of the things we did in our program is blindfold the kids. You don't need your eyes. There's, you've got to know where your opponent is based on little cues. At every opportunity, the Gardner wrestler seems to be able to stand up. You try to avoid a move from TJ, you're trying to set something up for himself. Well, if you're not initiating something, then something's going to happen to you. So two things are going on. One, by initiating, you put your, uh, you put your opponent on the defensive. So in some sense, you have a level of control. And additionally, you're trying to, um, you're trying to gain points, gain advantage. So 
ideally he'd like to reverse because he'd like to be on top. It's easier though to escape, hence the difference, escape one point, reverse two. As the old adage goes, the best offense or best defense is a good offense. Right? <laughs> That's it. You, you can correct me on that one, Todd, couldn't you? Correct. <laughs> the best defense is a good offense. Second period underway, 4-2, Williams leading, 9-0, doubles as a team leading. The Gardner Wildcats here live from the gym at Lummis High School with BDSN's special presentation of this wrestling. The last mid-watch meet of the year here at Lummis High School, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So there's Watch It and Clinton that remain. Watch this is the way. I guess Clinton was a reschedule that has to come back here, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. TJ looking for the cradle. At this point, no points are awarded because no control has been established. Okay. Each wrestler is equally out of control. <laughs> I don't think we could argue that one. Yeah, once one wrestler gets behind the wrestler, then the two points for the town are awarded. Okay. Last minute remaining here in the second period. Uh, this bill at 135 pounds. So what you're seeing here is uh, some pretty quick adjustment by Gardner. Gardner was taken down twice in the first period. The four points. Now he's adjusted to his opponent. His defensive maneuvers have improved such that TJ can't get him now. In fact, that's a pretty good single leg if he can finish it. TJ with that cross face. Trying to peel him off. Speaking from experience and covering other sports, this is some of the most active coaching I've ever seen in my career. <laughs> it's almost well, like they're inside the match. That, yeah, that's that's actually a good point you're bringing up. So, you know, I mean, what's that about? What's going on? The the these guys that are coaching are former wrestlers. Um, Rob, our head coach, uh, wrestled for Lemister High. Uh, Mike did not wrestle for Lemister High. The assistant coach but wrestled at college. These guys have a keen understanding of exactly what's going on. And it is, when you can pick up on the subtleties, this sport just takes control of you. And there goes round number two, 6-2 Williams. You got that, you got to take at the end there. This champ me chose bottom. And here we go. So last night the uh, kids in the youth program had practice as high school kids came down to your point about action. Yeah. And uh, the kids were asking them questions. And one of the questions was, why do you wrestle? And uh, one of them said, that uh, I do all the sports. I do football, I do baseball, I've done soccer. And wrestling is the one sport that offers me the highest level of action, the most petition that fully engages me. That's why the coach is getting engaged. <laughs> yeah, the amount of effort goes into six minutes is pretty incredible. Both men look tired here. Out of bounds. Oh, I guess. Locking hands, I guess. I didn't see that. You did that again? It's a little tighter. 6 3 Williams here with 120 remaining in the third period. Third and final period of this match. 
So Garner's got two options. One is escape, one point, take down two, ties up the match, takes it into overtime. Mm -hmm. The other option is two-point reversal, take him to his back. Hasn't had him on his back yet, that's a reach. Third option is take him right to his back. Unlikely, because he hasn't taken him to his back yet. I don't think he's getting there anytime soon. <laughs> For a minute, 54 seconds remaining in the third period. So this is a situation where there is a lot of pressure on Gardner. The coaches are seeing the wrestlers go up and come down, all defeated. Mm -hmm. So they're going to start. Um, they're going to start communicating some of the pressure they're feeling uh, to the wrestlers. So this guy right here is going to be put under a lot of pressure by his coaches, by the team, and the, as the subsequent wrestlers would be also. And that pressure is very much a part of this sport. And it's, it's these opportunities that wrestlers get to perform. Mm -hmm. He will either dig deep maybe deeper than he's ever gone inside of himself and find a place where he's never been and do something he didn't believe was possible. And he's got 19 seconds to make that happen. Pressure makes diamonds and makes dust, one or the other. Interesting situation with 14 matches. At what point do you become absolutely positively desperate for points? When you don't have any on the board. <laughs> Yeah, don't want to be blanked. And there goes another one, a 6-3 win for Williams in three dominating rounds. That'll be another three team points added to the board. Board shows 12, nothing Lominster here. Seem to have been skipping around here. It seems like they're going to go to the 140 um, week class next. Trev is another, another youth program wrestler. This match, I think you'll see a level of action that you, that's going to set things up. A, oh, son of a gun, you're not going to see a thing. Oh, oh you're going to see a six points go up on the team score. Geez. All right. Okay, so. And so much for that. So here's the deal. <laughs> now. This, his opponent, who's going to wrestle up at 35, chose to wrestle up. He weighed in at 140, wrestled Travis at the tournament, Travis beat him. Yep. So the deal here is they know that he's going to lose again. They're going to send him up out of weight class to wrestle a lesser opponent. They want to put po points on the board. Bad. What the heck, they can steal one of their bases. Yep. Well. So they got one of their race horses going up against one of our freshmen. Tim Frazier against. Gonna go back on it's Rio Bouchard. Bouchard. Well, makes the team score 18 nothing. Lemonster. They've got to hope to pull something out here. Frazier with the headlock. Oh, no. A big surprise. <laughs> I expect to see retaliation pretty quick here. Yeah. Points for Gardner. So the reason we didn't get any points out of that, even though it looked like he was in a dominant position, again, clear control had not been established. Okay. Getting out of this one. Can I get his head out of there? <laughs> and I'll lean into that one with a little body rush. <clears throat> 35 seconds remaining in the first period. 145 pound weight class. No back points yet. Bouchard <laughs> jumped up the 4 nothing lead. 
The ref did award him two back points on that one. An interesting mindset it has to be here. Frazier originally in the cross mat was not listed to wrestle tonight. So basically, would he walk back in his preparedness kind of scale back, think he's kind of got may get it easy? Or do you anticipate that coming in that somebody may try to wrestle up? As a freshman, I don't think you ever anticipate anything easy. Second period underway, Gunner leading this match for nothing. It's Bouchard and Frigger in the 145. You're watching PDSN's live coverage of this special wrestling here live from the Jim at Lester High School. Todd Robbins, television voice in Blue Dogs, joined by Greg Davis and Pat Mason here, my resident wrestling experts. Because I'm not going to lie to you, I really didn't know a thing coming into this evening. So Frazier's making him work, though. Um, yeah, you got to give him credit. He's staying off. He's minimizing the damage here. Uh, he's. He's, he's doing a nice job. He's really doing a nice job against clearly a superior opponent. So he is wrestling defensively and wrestling well in that capacity. It will be hard for him to mount, <laughs> mount a strong offense against this opponent. So the strategy is really to stay out of harm's way. Avoid the pin. Avoid the pin. Don't give up six. He just got the reversal. He gave him two, okay. 6-2 Bouchard. Gave him two back. seconds remaining in the second period here. Instinctively, he goes right to his belly. You can see the pain on his face. End of the second. 8-2. Bouchard leading Frazier. So the one part of this gym structure that he does not want to look at is the ceiling. <laughs> he can tolerate looking at walls. But the ceiling is out of the question. <laughs> okay, now what he put in was a chicken wing. Gardner's got a chicken wing and he So he was able to use that chicken wing to initiate a tilt. He did not gather any back points out of it. Frazier has a fair amount of experience moving out of difficult situations. As a freshman, he's gotten himself into plenty of situations like that. And so he has gained some experience rapidly as to how to get out. And his flexibility helps a lot. He seems to be double jointed with just every joint in his body. 55 seconds remaining in the third and final period of this one. Bouchard, a commanding 8-2 lead. So you notice Tim just keeps moving. He just keeps moving. Harder to hit a moving target. Yep, yeah, yeah, good point. So there's one point, and he's gonna. No, he hasn't awarded one point yet. So he should be giving him one point now. 
So the win for Tim here is to put points on the board. And he put three up, but that's pretty good. Nice job. Nice job for a young wrestler. Put into a tough, tough situation. Now in the past, freshman wrestlers would go up against an opponent like this and just be torn apart. One reason a fresh, freshman can come out and wrestle a good match these days is because the level of competition on the team has stepped up to such a high level that that he's going to get an education real quick just by joining this team. So the quality level of the of the oh so okay. And well there's Mason gets quick six. Son of a gun. Oh well. And he, father he, and a he, wrestling man. You can't be real happy with the easy six. So so the the worst yeah. These guys work hard, mm -hmm. and, and, and they work hard because they want to wrestle. And there are two things that cause you pain. One is to lose, <laughs> but the other, and maybe even more, is to train, prepare, and then come to a, a match, and there's no opponent. It's just a huge letdown. It's a so, huge letdown. What's the likely reasoning behind not having an opponent? There's not enough people to take every weight class? Uh, they just don't have the feeder system to populate all the weight classes. Um, and, and we've been seeing that. All, the, all the, the meets that we've gone to this year, I don't think that with every single one that I can remember, there have been blank weight classes on the other teams. Some of the programs, like Hudson, has had a huge um, falling out. Right. You know, their team is half, you know, like six, eight wrestlers. Clinton, the same thing. Um, Marlboro, missing all kinds of Marlboro, weights. Marlboro, they used to be a big team. Huge, huge team. So it seems, just generally speaking, many of the programs are starting to taper down for whatever reason, I'm not sure. And Lemonsters is going exactly in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. picking up a lot of steam, a lot of attention. There's a lot of people here tonight watching the wrestling match. And if they're not here, we hope they're at home watching live. It's BDS and touch your coverage of this wrestling match here at the gym at Lemonsters High School. Doug Roberts, the Lemonsters twice and the others. Joined by Greg Nicholas and Pat Mason. Our wrestling experts. Greg, what are we looking at here in the 160 pound weight class? This is Chris Hoyt of Lemonster. This is Dave Wainwright of Gardner. Three or two so far. In favor of Lemonster. So long. Round number one. Now, what I've noticed these sportsmanship exhibited by both teams, really a great example for their schools, hometowns, really something the citizens of Lemister should be proud of. And actually also the citizens of Gardner, really a stand-up, no uh, backbiting, trash-talking, one thing you do see in other yeah. sports that you're not seeing here. That's a good point. Very good point. So, in some sense, paradoxical. Here you have people just hammering away on each other. I mean, this is hand-to-hand, eye-to-eye. Right? Slap and bang. And there's a tremendous amount of pain happening out there. But it's, it's almost, I don't know, this might sound kind of corny, but it just comes to mind for me. So in nature, you know, dominance is established without, you know, w without maiming, critically maiming, you know, the other animal. Dominance is established out here. And with that, there's a level of respect. Each wrestler knows what the other has done to be able to perform that way. It's not an accident. It's not natural endowment. It's a tremendous amount of hard work, and that leads to mutual respect. These, you won't see a cheap shot. You just plain won't, because they respect each other too much, because they know what they've done to get here. Preparation. That's the end of the second period. Oh, 
Corey has him on his back. Marching his back. I didn't know you could bend your spine that way. Obviously, this is your first wrestling meet. <laughs> you can with the right motivation, right? <laughs> I suppose. There it is. That's a six. Good night, Irene. Add another six to the board. 30 seconds remaining in the second round there. Board reads, and then rethinking their math. 33, a Lemonster lead. Very nice work by Chris Hoyt on that one. All right, in the 171 category, this is Mike Chasen of Lemister versus one of them two in the second goal. <laughs> she Tai Tang. Yeah, look at that, she Tai Tang. Of Gardner. She Tang, a lot simpler. Chasen looking at a reshot. Face. He gets the two. Nothing's easy. Every move has a counter. Uh, the number of moves, there's hundreds of moves. Endless. Endless number. Endless. And every move does have a counter. Something, one thing I've noticed that I haven't really made a, a note of. This really isn't Greco-Roman wrestling, and it's certainly not freestyle wrestling. Uh, this is from what my small amount of study has said. Is folk wrestling? Folk style or scholastic. This follows... So this is basically uh, domestic, U.S.-based uh, wrestling. Goes through college. Mm -hmm. The Once you're done college, if you stay in the U.S., you can continue with this through various avenues. Uh, USA Wrestling has a, has a program. But if you get into international competition, then you're primarily going to be based in freestyle. And then you have, in addition to that, you also have uh, another popular international form, which is Greco Roman. They uh -huh. stop. No legs. You can't attack the legs or use the legs to initiate moves. Yikes. Those guys have a tendency to look like gorillas. <laughs> And they don't wear headgear either in that style. <laughs> They're animals. <laughs> 13 seconds remaining in this, the first period. Jason Lemonson leads 4-2. Out of bounds. We'll go back to the center. So going back to uh, your sportsmanship comment earlier, one of the, one of the things that separates this sport from others is the um, results. Results only come through a uh, tremendous investment. Mm -hmm. um, and that investment just comes down to, you know, hours of, of time and dedication, study, physical work. I think something that looks off of that also, uh, that you mentioned investment, that's an investment of personal being. It's an investment of money. I, I can't imagine, I mean, I'm not real sure of the headgear. That's about it. The no. headgear was singlet. But right. we're not looking at a million dollars to play a sport. No. This is a sport that is not filled with apparatus. Uh, it's really, I mean, it's just about two people. And um, it does, it does for, for some people, the interpretation is that this is just way too violent. There is action associated with it. It does appear to be violent. Very seldom will there be an injury. Very seldom. You'll go to a tournament. I went to a tournament the weekend, 350 wrestlers. Each wrestling approximately two or three matches. Not a single injury. Really? Yeah. So the violence in wrestling is controlled. It's not a street fight, it's very controlled. 
Controlled aggression, the key, and Mike Chasen ties up on the six points. 36-3. Columbus, so this one comes with one minute remaining in the second period. Is this the point where you like to call it El Desperado? Well, uh... Um, 33 point deficit? Yeah, yeah. So the Gardner's resigned itself to the, you know, inevitable at this point. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be a very different match. Uh, this gentleman here from Gardner kind of cut out of a piece of granite. Um, so we've, we, we've got a lad that is probably scared to death. I mean, you, you don't walk into a circle and look at someone like that and not be scared to death. So when you face your fear and you walk off the mat, if you walk off the mat, you're just feeling pretty good about yourself. Because you expect to be carried off. Mm -hmm. That was the 181 pound weight 89. Huh? 89. Oh, excuse me, it's the 189 pound weight class. Chris Walgren of Gardner getting the quick victory over Chris Gallant of Lemster. So, 36-9. Well, they're just and giving up a lot of classes Ben Algarin just got the forfeit. And adios to another six points. Make that 42 now. You're watching this special live broadcast. Here from the Jim at Lemister High School, it's BDSN. You're home for, yes, uh, for your doubles. Varsity Sports Wrestling, new edition here. A special edition live here from the gym at Lemister High School. Todd Robbins, television's voice of the Blue Devils, joined by Greg Nicodus and Pat Mason. Here we go. So I'm just looking at the score, 42 to 9. Clearly, the superior team is very evident at this point. And so I go back and pick up on the youth program, and sure. because you know the the. That score is a result of a, a feeder system that's been put in place, a program that is strong and healthy, that building an infrastructure in these kids such that you can, you can build off it very quickly when you get to the high school. So there's, there's some credit that needs to be given to some folks. Uh, several years ago, Mayor Mazzarella uh, commissioned a youth program. And at that point, he created the opportunity for wrestling to, um, to have the chance to formally find, find its way, find its legs. With his impetus and Todd Weed's uh, picking up uh, off of it, the youth program started. So there's kind of like a human chain here, and I'll talk each of the links. So really, it was the, the, the mayor, by uh, sanctioning the effort, Todd Weed picked it up, plugged in wrestling. Jeff Richard and myself were the kids at the time, at that time, put a program in place that is in place today, and it, it has grown. The, the Let's see if I... I think I go back to the very beginning. I think we had, I don't know, maybe, maybe we had 10 kids, roughly thereabouts. I mean, just low numbers. Now the the youth program goes from K to five, and then six to eight. K to five, 45 plus kids are enjoying the program. Andy Algarin, who's the head coach of the. Uh, the head coach of the 6-8, um, they got 15 or 20. So there's a supply chain, supply chain ready to fill these seats over here. Now, Todd, as you, you were saying about that mismatch, <laughs> Sean so. Griffin just got a takedown. Uh, yes, uh, when he just walked out of the mat, it did look like a David versus Goliath matchup. Well, it is. It absolutely is. So, so what, what did David and Goliath show us? It's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the fight in the dog. Absolutely. Class example. And I think this is also a real testament to your <laughs> youth program. Sean Griffin, actually, I know Sean and his family outside of this, and they had said that, you know, he was a wrestler, he was heavyweight, and that he was going to wrestle a lot at the heavyweight level. And I was like, 
as a freshman, and, and this goes back to what uh, your point earlier, it really doesn't matter you know, where you are, what graduating class, it just, it absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. Now obviously, a tremendous amount of skill went into taking down that guy. Mm-hmm. All right? Absolutely. <laughs> Do, you have any idea what he weighed in at, Greg? The Gardner guy? Uh, you know, they didn't list it. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it's a ton more than Sean. Yeah. <laughs> There's no question about that. So essentially, Sean can win this match by assuming a defensive posture. Now, against a guy that size, a defensive posture is no simple matter. He's got to stay off his back. That's going to be way tough. He knocked into turn with that half Nelson. Now, the other thing he's got as a tool to uh, balance this imbalance, okay, <laughs> is his stamina. Now, if he makes that guy work so that his gas tank runs out faster, he'll win that way too. So there's several areas. You got strength, you got stamina, you got speed, you got skill. Those are the physical tools you bring onto the mat. Strength, he's gonna lose big time here. No match up there, don't do it. He has to compensate with, what are his assets? One is skill and one is stamina. I think he's got speed. Dude. And he's got speed. Those are the things he has to bring into the situation. 196 pounds is what Sean weighed in at. A ton may be a rough estimate. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is bad, this is bad. If he gets out of this, he, this is tough to get out of. This is way tough. Get out of bounds, get out of bounds. And he's done it. That was very good. All right, to get out of his clutches, that, that's, that's big. That, that is some heart right there. <laughs> that's just willpower. So you still couldn't pay me enough to get involved in this. <laughs> you, you talk, I'm very happy being where I am today. You talk about pressure. He got out of that because of the size of his heart. Nope, you know, I mean, that's the only reason. This, this is one of those situations where, you know, somebody picks up a car because somebody's hurt. I mean, you don't get away from that guy just because you, you say, geez whiz, I don't like it here. I think I'd like to get away. <laughs> no, you invoke something from deep within. It's so easy to just say good night and wait until the referee slaps the mat. Yeah. Look at that, he's going to get two again. What, what? He might get the one here. He gets shot. A 3-2 lead for Reed here. is back now. Sneaks up that near shoulder. Oh. Only 24 seconds left. Look at that, look at that, look at that big guy. <laughs> I mean, can he work for that or what? Uh, yeah, I would say so. The 196 pound John Griffin definitely Nothing. made him earn that one. That was, was a the, nice match. There was a 275 pound weight class. 5-2 win for Reed of Gardner. It was actually pinned at the very end. The score was 5-2. That's correct. Until the pin. Nice match. Very nice. 42 to 15, the team score in favor of Lemster. Now we sneak back to the beginning of the list. I was going to say, they seem to be going out of order here, but yeah. here we go. Once again, we go to the top of our list. Greg Hoyt. This is the 105. Or check that 103. Yeah. Hoyt weighing in at 105 tonight. This would be a good match. Speaking of the order of the matches, yes. that's, that's new this year. What they do is they select the weight class at rate and start there. Really? They used to just start at 103 and work their way up, but you know, it's a little unfair to the little guys. 
Well, I was going to say, any particular reason why, other than the fact that the other guys are going to sit there, and obviously they aren't as warm when they come in. So it's just a way to put the uh, put the pressure someplace else. Mm -hmm. you, you go from small to large. Many of the, many of the matches, or some matches, will come down to the last wrestler. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins the match, whoever wins that particular match, will determine the outcome of the meet. So this is a way to not have it be always the headway deciding the outcome. Good point with the takedown. That headlock. So actually that would leave us with what, roughly three matches remaining because I believe we started in the 125 this evening. That's correct. So 50 seconds remaining here in the first round, Greg Hoyt versus N. Dong. So we're probably going to break 50 points again, which is a, it's just a huge, uh, a huge point spread. I mean, putting 50 points up on the board. Yeah, there's six more. There's there 48. It is. We're going to break 50 points again, which we've done in many of our meets this year. So in terms of the gap, between us and the other teams, uh, it's been very, very significant. Very significant. Greg Hoyt has that signature headlock. <laughs> very difficult to get out of. judo. <laughs> Him and his brother both yeah. experienced in judo. 48-15. Yeah. Let me show with a huge team lead. We go to the 112 pound division. Another forfeit, my gosh. And Max Gray, I believe that look just about says it all. The look of disappointment, as you said, really, you prepare so long and hard for this. Yeah. You just want to wrestle. <laughs> I don't think you're asking for too much. So 54 to 15. This, this is another good story, actually. Um, so, Jim, one, one of the other things that happens in wrestling is the best wrestler wins the Barbie slot. Mm -hmm. This young man, Jim, for Lemeter, has not had the varsity slot all year, but before every meet, you have an opportunity to challenge for a varsity spot. Mm -hmm. He has challenged his opponent all year, and the other night won the right to wrestle varsity. For me, that's just kind of cool because you don't lock it up day one. You got to earn it every day. There's no. There's no, okay, yeah, okay, you're the varsity guy all season. One of the things I like about wrestling is kind of the, the, the honesty of it. Yep. You're there because you are the best Lemonster wrestler at that weight. Right, it doesn't matter what grade you're in. Doesn't matter the grade, who parents are, <laughs> who the coach is. Yeah, that was amazing, actually. I had heard some wrestlers talk about these challenge matches. Now, you said yep. these occurred just before you meet. Yep. And then go after anybody in their own weight class? Usually, what is it, one or two guys or three, maybe four it guys? It depends how deep it is. You know, some, some classes seem to fit more into the kind of the mainstream of, of the high school yep. norm. So they might have more individuals in there. But, yeah, you may have to wrestle off two potentially times to earn, you know, knock off two or three opponents oh, and that's to get typical. the top slot. So long to round number one, a four-nothing lead for Gardner. I believe that's Bill Joyner, Joyner in there against Jim DeMarzo. Apparently they're going neutrally to start round number two. Jim with the sprawl. Going to try to get around him to get his points. 
That one was called the Gator okay, Roll. Okay, okay, good, good. Now he's wrecking up some points. <laughs> It's like the old slot machine. It's I'm swinging for a million. He gets a pin. Look at that. Wow. That kid was wrestling with a mission. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that was a big win for Jim. Every loss he's had, he took out on that kid. <laughs> but he took it, took it out fairly right. with rules and respect. Again, controlled. Look at that. 60 to 15. That's the final. Final score here from Jim at Lummis High School. Your Lummis High School Blue Noble Wrestling Team wins another one. 60 15. Maintain the top of the Midwatch. And for all intents and purposes, gentlemen, that basically wraps up Midwatch for them, doesn't it? The first time that Lemonster has experienced the team dimension of wrestling. Pretty much it's just been a collection of kids that have wrestled. Some are really good. And so you really got into like the strong performer, Joey Manzello, mm -hmm. right? So that's the one you watch. This year, the team is experiencing that team dimension that this sport also offers. Individually, you can go as far as you want without the team. Go on to the states, regionals, and nationals. You can also do that as a team. This is the first year the team has really coalesced around the mission, which now they have finalized, which is this... Um, which is this mid-watch division that they have completely dominated, uh, unbeaten, mm -hmm. unbeaten. So, uh, so what's behind that, right? I mean, where did that come from? It comes from hard work over a lot of years. And it starts with, it has started with youth program. 80% of the, 80% of these kids been through that program, familiar with hard work. In some ways, and Greg knows this, there's, there's some kind of infatuation, some seduction about that hard work that keeps them there because there's a return. Something comes back. You put out a lot and you get back a lot. The rewards for wrestling are as are, are very obvious as are you know the losses. It's just obvious. There's no ambiguity. The clarity, the clarity is, is there and, and so there's no confusion. Uh, there's no political stuff to cloud it or get in the way of it. So the, the hard work pays off, but the hard work is something that is just spread out over a lot of years, uh, a, a ton of years, because you don't get to this level, and that's what's hard for people to understand. You don't get to this level without a tremendous dedication uh, to the sport. Um, and in addition to that, I think that basis of the sportsmanship that you see. Mm -hmm. The team is a class act. These kids are very respectful. And one of the things that helps that, I think, is really fully understanding, internalizing the humility of a loss. Mm -hmm. It just, it hurts. It hurts a ton. But because it hurts a ton, you have a great respect for every one of your opponents and the teams that you wrestle. And I think therein is the secret to the sportsmanship. These guys truly do respect each other. There's a huge respect. There's a, there's a brotherhood that exists amongst wrestlers, no matter what team, what state, what country they come from. There's an orientation, there's an affiliation, there's a relationship that is automatic, it's unskilled. That's what the sportsmanship is about, and, the, and underneath of that, is the hard work that leads to the respect, and the fruit of that is the sportsmanship. Yeah, every wrestler here has the mutual respect mm. for every other wrestler. Well, that's one thing I think is very, very, very plain to see. Uh, there's no question in my mind the respect that, again, occurs across the, the yes. uh, aisle. The other thing, right. I mean, I know I can see every night, I mean, we're here late night, so we see these guys coming for practice, and just the dedication, the hard work, I mean, I watch them run 15 laps around C and D wing. I mean, if any been to Lemus High School, that's a real long walk from end to end. Now imagine running that 15 times. Uh, I think I'm out after about the first one. So I mean, the dedication is just to me, it's a phenomenal thing to see. One of the things that, so a typical here's a typical practice. Hard work for is so I'll try to make that picture so the folks can understand uh, hard work. They'll start with. 
you know, the running that you've said, running that, I don't know, miles of running. Eight laps, I think stairs, they do. Stairs. Carry your buddy up the stairs. Carry your partner. Push-ups, sit-ups. So they'll have a routine that'll just be an entire physical program for some sports. That is only the appetizer. Right. Then they go in the wrestling room. They start to wrestle. They'll wrestle they'll wrestle multiple opponents. Right. They'll do some drilling. Then they'll wrestle again. Mm -hmm. So in terms of hard work, it's just it's way off the charts. The physical attributes necessary in this sport are just off the charts. You're not developing one a single dimension. You're developing, you know, the physical attributes to a very, you know, fine edge. Additionally, mentally and emotionally, this sport takes some nurturing also. It's pretty training. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to be joined now by uh, our fine coaching affiliation. We'll uh, grab the nearest mic. Yeah, there we go. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, if you continue to stay with us, we are live. It's the gym at Lemister High School. Final score here, 60-15, a win for Lemister High School. Another huge one keeps them on top. Watch. Coach, I must say you must be quite pleased with this win this evening. Yes, I am. I'm actually very impressed. <laughs> now, we are, these kids, they've been working out all week. Uh, uh, we happen to have Thursday night, the power went out. So uh, we grabbed about five flashlights, and the guys wrestled in the dark or in the very dim light, and they kept going, putting forth great effort. That's, that's again, the dedication. We were just actually talking about it. The dedication and stories like that are what really, really allow me to respect the sport like this. Coach, is it, again, we were talking earlier, you guys really do get into the match as a coaching staff. Probably one of the only sports I've seen coaches so involved in a match, and it really has to do with your love for sport. Uh, yeah, actually, it's. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing this tonight. Um, I know. I know we do look goofy out there. You see us twisting and turning our bodies. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, once you've wrestled the match, it's. There's nothing more exciting than uh, these guys because you, you. You appreciate the hard work and the effort that goes into it. And then uh, you know, if you look around the room here, you see all the smiling faces, uh, not just on the wrestlers, but on the uh, alumni, the parents. Uh, that's one thing I think that keeps the program going is the uh, parents and support that, that we get from them. Well, Coach, let me be one first to congratulate you on this huge mid-watch win. We look forward to seeing more of that. That'll do from the gym here at Lister High School live here on BDSN and LEAC TV 36. For Greg Nickerson and Pat Mason, I'm Todd Robbins, television voice of the Blue Devils. So long, everybody. Incredible. Another moment in the region's interscholastic athletic history relived. Memories able to be shared from one generation to the next. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Classic Replay. All of these memories and the rest of RFM's programming is available on demand on YouTube. Subscribe to Rivalry Family Media and like or follow RFM on Facebook at Media Rivalry. I'm Todd Robbins. On behalf of my producer, Kate Robbins, Bill Thomas, and the rest of the RFM family. We thank you so very much for being a part of our family. Until next time, so long, everybody.